Hello and welcome to Stein. My name's Andy. Thank you for joining me um, today. Let's begin by uh, committing this time to God and praying and using the, the words of the, the prayer of approach on the sheet. Let's, let's commit this time to God. So loving God, we're here to worship you. Help us to remember that you are here with us. May we pray to you in faith. Use technology to connect with each other and listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment now to, to say hello and to, to greet each other. So in the text section on the right, I invite you now just to say hello, perhaps say where you're from, um, and have a bit of interaction with the other people. So we know that we're worshipping as part of a group rather than just watching something um, at home. If, if you are watching this at a different time on YouTube, then I guess you just fast forward this bit. But let's take a time to, to welcome each other. Okay, ready, go. today light of the world first of all Let's pray. 
pray together. Lord God, we thank you for your goodness, that you bring light and goodness and grace and mercy and love to this world. Today, may we know that you are with us. May we know your presence and see your light today. We thank you that you make all things good, that you work for good in the world, in the midst of um, the, the, the disappointment and brokenness, which we describe as darkness, you are the light, and the light cannot be extinguished by darkness. We thank you that you are alive, that you are with us. Amen. So I invite you now, um, if you're watching this live with me, to type into the comments, as we always do, one word which describes why today, particularly today, so far, why God is good for you. Okay, so one word, why is God good for you today? Go. Would you please reply if you wish to, either in your head or out loud or even typed, Lord have mercy. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are light and you are goodness. But we're aware that often we fail you. We fail to uh, live as people in the light and instead we live in darkness. Forgive us for the times when we have lost hope in you, when we've forgotten that you are present with us, when we've been overwhelmed by the bad news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we're sorry for the times when we have been thoughtless, when we've been careless with the feelings and needs of other people, when we've hurt them, when we've thought ill, when we've been dismissive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're sorry for when we've let fear overtake us, when we've been bound by worry and anxiety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we're sorry for the ways in which we have misused the gifts which you have given us. When we've been selfish with possessions, when we've uh, been greedy, when we've been materialistic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the good news. Christ came to bring forgiveness, to reconnect us again with God and he overlooks our sins. 
Amen. Thanks be to God. We're now going to turn to the scriptures. Um, Catherine Corkish is going to read to us today. On the sheet, there's a space for you to fill in the passage. It's John 20, 19 to 31 today. And there's a box here for you to note down any words or phrases which particularly jump out at you as Catherine reads. So be open in your spirit, listen out for words which are particularly particularly resonant and alive today and write them in here because they may be the bits that God wants to bring alive to you from his living word. Let's hear from the gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. As I was thinking about this, this service, I was really struck by a line from, well, a couple of lines actually, from the song, As the Deer Pants for the Water. I'll unpack this later, but the disciples had locked themselves in the house because they were frightened. And it got me thinking about where we get our sense of security and protection from. And I love the line in this song, as the deer pants the water, you alone are my strength, my shield. And that's something I've been thinking through over the last few days. So let's sing this together now. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you.
read to us, the disciples were in lockdown. They were hiding away um, in, a, in a room, possibly the one where they celebrated the, the well, they, they had the Last Supper a few days before. And this happens, it says, on the, on the evening of that day. So this is the day when Jesus first appeared to, to people, the risen Lord first appeared, and he appeared to Mary Magdalene in John's account. And this is him appearing to the rest of them. So they were in lockdown, they were hiding themselves away, and it says quite clearly twice, the door was shut. And the reason why is because they were frightened. In, in the other Gospels, the, uh, everyone is frightened um, in the resurrection, and Jesus always has to say, or the angels say, do not be afraid. But it's normally because of the inbreaking of God. But here it's slightly different. John says that they were frightened because of fear of the Jews. Now, I just want to get this out of the way before we start. This was a particular thing at the time. Um, relationships have broken down between the, the Christians and the Jews. Christianity and Judaism had begun to split apart. Christianity had become a thing by the time John's Gospel was written, or at least the later versions of it, the last edits of it. Um, uh, and it was a particularly tense time. So when John talks about being afraid of the Jews, that's kind of just a thing for that time. It doesn't mean that we can apply that today. That was just a thing of the context at the time. There's no excuse for anti-Semitism or, or fear today. But anyway, the disciples were locked in their room, which has, <laughs> you know, immediate connections with us today where we where we are at the moment and we'll come to that later but despite being locked in Jesus suddenly appears in the middle of them it's, it uses the Greek word meson which um, I always like that word because when I used to teach um, physics particularly particle physics a meson is a type of particle and it's one which sits in the middle um, that's what the word means um, there are particles which are less massive, ones which are more massive, and the mesons are kind of like middly ones. But anyway, Jesus appears, <laughs> completely off track there. Jesus comes and stands in the middle of the disciples. The locked door is no barrier to him. He, he appears in the middle of them. But um, it's very clear in this passage that Jesus wasn't just like a ghostly figure who sort of walk through the walls because he then invites the disciples to see his body and to touch him. So yeah, Jesus did appear in the middle of them in a kind of spiritual way but also in a physical way. Um, we don't really know how that works, what that, what that means, but Jesus gets in and he gets into the middle of them. These are the people who were locked away in fear. These are the people who had betrayed him just days before and Jesus appears right in the middle of them. In his first words, always good the first words of Jesus. His first words are peace to you. Um, in the original language he would have said shalom, which means that everything is going to be restored. Everything is going to come back into harmony. Everything that's out of joint is going to be put back. Everything will be restored and made good. How good is that? So peace to you. He then it, it, it happens quite quickly in the story in John, but he does several things which are really, really key, which I, I'd like to unpack. It says that he breathes on them. He breathes on them. And the word used is uh, quite a rare word. And whenever the other times it's used in the Bible, 
are really significant and I think we need to look at, back at those quickly to, to see what this word means to kind of give give some I'm going to say flesh on the bones which is kind of exactly the right word to, to flesh out this word breathing see, it's more than just the normal process of air coming in and out um, in Genesis Genesis 2 uh, verse 7 it says that God took the dust of the earth he took dirt from the ground and he breathed his spirit into it gave it life so humans are a mixture we're a blend of the physical natural stuff of the world but yet we are alive because God has breathed his spirit into us we're a mixture of the ordinary and the divine and here Jesus breathes into the disciples as if their kind of broken dust mud like but they need something new and he breathes into them the spirit and brings them to life he recreates them this is an act of recreation going on here um, Jesus reanimates recreates the disciples and they are changed because after this they aren't afraid anymore he breathes the spirit into them. The other classic use of this breathing is in Ezekiel 37, which I talked about in a bit more in depth in the flip preaching video before this. Um, there was a, uh, an ancient prophetic picture of everything being desolate and broken and a field being full of bones and God breathes his spirit and the bones get flesh and muscles and things are brought back to life. There is nothing, 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 nothing which is too far gone for God to reanimate and bring back to life. So these disciples who had kind of failed um, in many ways, he breathes new life and he rebuilds them into his new creation. He then sends them out. He says, as the Father sent me, I now send you. He commissions them to do his work, to be Jesus in the world. How exciting is that? And he tells them to go forgiving people. He says to bring forgiveness, tell people, you know, forgive their sins, forgive people's sins, because whatever you forgive will be forgiven in all the ways possible. He sends them out with a message of... <clears throat> pardon me, forgiveness and reconciliation and grace. He asked them to rebuild what's broken too. And later on, they do. They become the backbone of the early church and everything spirals off. Christianity is born from their witness and their work after being breathed into. We think that what, what John was describing here, this encounter of Jesus and the disciples, in this room was in some ways a mirror of early church services there were all kind of clues here the fact that it happens on the first day of the week the the expression of peace has been a part of church services right from the start they they shared peace with each other there was the fact that christ was in the middle of them and possibly that's um a sort of poetic way of saying that Jesus was in the middle of all the church services that happened and still is in the middle of all church services that happened perhaps particularly in the preaching and in the the sacrament of communion um, right from the start the disciples met um, on the first day of the week and there's a bit of debate about which whether that's Saturday or Sunday here it seems to be Saturday night but um, they met and they broke bread and shared wine. They, they recreated, recreated the, the Last Supper and brought it back to life again. So Christ was with them, even though he wasn't, even though they had bread and wine. They still believed that Christ was there in the middle of them. There was the idea of sending out, which happened at the end of every church service and blessing. So maybe what we have here is um, the, the way John wrote this was in the light of his experience of going to church with people every week and the sort of things that they did. So we've got the context here is partly perhaps what Jesus actually did that day, but it's also blended with John's own 
experience of what it's like to meet Jesus in a room with other people sharing peace. I wonder how church is for you at the moment. Today, how is church? Because it's very different than it would have been a few weeks ago. If you were, if you were a churchgoer before, what we're doing now is very, very different. I mean, in some ways it isn't. We've got the same elements in a sty service or in any other of the versions of online church. The same ingredients are there, but it feels very different because you're watching on a screen or you're reading on a bit of paper. Um, it's different, but it's kind of the same as it's always been. Although we're locked down, um, at the moment, though we can't mix in the way that we would perhaps like to, it still works as church. And I think it's interesting to reflect on how church is, is different now and how it's actually still the same. Because Jesus still can get into the middle of it. I really believe that through these acts of worshipping together, um, using technology, using Facebook or YouTube or Zoom or whatever people are using, Jesus will still get in the middle of it. It's reminded us that the buildings that we use for church are kind of unimportant. Our home is just as good as a church building. You can't fit so many people in when, you, when, we, when we can meet back together again and all sorts of reasons why we do have church buildings, but actually there's no sort of sacred reason why the home doesn't work perfectly well. It's all sacred, all space is sacred, all space is touched by the presence of God all the time. So it doesn't matter actually that we're in our homes. The use of, the use of technology in this way has massively increased the reach of um, the church. This, this is true of Stye, this is true of, um, I think, all the expressions of online church. They're, they're seeing far more people engaging than we would have done before in our normal brick and bricks and mortar versions of church. Perhaps it's because people today are realising that they need some comfort. They need the presence of God. There's a, there's a hunger for God's holiness. And I hope that is the case and I hope that the things like Stai are able to go some way to, to meeting that. I think it's also that the barriers of entry are a lot lower. It's a lot, we, we sometimes forget those of us who go to church often who are in the habit of just how odd it is and how much of a barrier it is to some people to do that. So to go to a you know, an unusual building to what do you wear, where do you sit, everyone else knows each other. There are loads of barriers for people getting involved. And people now increasingly check things out online before they commit in person. If you are going to a restaurant, this is, you know, in the days before this or in the days after it, when, um, when, when people think about going to a restaurant, I think most people today would go to the website and have a look at the menu and see what sort of food, look at the photos, that sort of thing. People are checking out in the same way, checking out church online and perhaps you're doing that too. So you're very welcome. It's really lovely that, you, that you're, you're checking, checking this out. So the barriers are lower and so more and more people are able to be involved. And as a Methodist, this is really exciting for me because Methodism started with this exact um, thing in mind. It, um, the time when Methodism first started, church was something which was quite dull and wishy-washy. It was quite elitist. And the Wesleys realised that we need to make it easier for people actually to encounter God. We need to take away some of the barriers. So they went out to meet people where they were, rather than expecting people to come and sit through a long, turgid church service. That's what Methodism started off as, it's going to people and making it easier, getting rid of the barriers. So for me as a Methodist minister, this is really exciting that we've, we've found a way of lowering the barriers at the moment. Jesus, remember, Jesus breathed on the disciples and that happens now because although you're in your home, Jesus is there with you able to breathe the same spirit into you. You just have to say yes and be calm 
and to slow down and invite the Spirit in. And as we pray, we, we will do that. I pray that right now you are feeling the Holy Spirit in you, reanimating you, giving you new hope and energy and life and purpose. Remember, Jesus sent the disciples out. Um, they were to be his body in the world. And similarly, we're being sent out. Now, perhaps not, perhaps not physically at the moment, but how can we use our online presence to be good news, to be Jesus for people around us? I'll leave that as a question for you. How can you go and be good news and blessing uh, a blessing to the to the digital world, to the people you know. Remember, although it's a digital world, there are real people on the other end of the screen. So how can you bridge um, to them through the technology that we have at our, uh, at, our, at our fingertips today? And finally, when this is all over, what do you think church should be like? What are the things which you've learned, which you've experienced, which you've been surprised by, about doing church in this way. This is the time now to be thinking these things through so that when, when we come out the other end, we can build on this and we can use the good things that we've learnt um, and keep them as part of our, of our regular practice. We can blend the, the physical gathering, but we can keep this digital online church perhaps. So have a think about that. I'd be very interested to hear what your, what your thoughts are. So let's now sing a song which very beautifully expresses the way in which we are to be the presence of Jesus in the world. Make me a channel of your peace. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred let me bring your love your shalom when things are broken. We lift to you now people we know for whom life is a real struggle at the moment. Please draw near to them. Let them hear your words of peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for all those who are physically unwell, whether with COVID-19 or one or the other or anything else. Lord, come near and bring your healing and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those people who are working hard to keep things good at the moment, the people working in the medical field, for those working to bring us food, keeping things going. Lord, will you please sustain them, energise them, and may they be encouraged by the fact that you are alongside. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have authority, who have the wisdom, um, who have the power to make decisions, that they will have wisdom, that they will be guided by you, that they will make correct, good decisions which benefit the poor and the needy, that in these challenging times that they may know your strength and your hand guiding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the church, separated but alive. Will you please help us to be good news, to be your hands and feet in this world and teach us what it means to be your disciples out here in the digital world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's now pray the Lord's Prayer in whichever version you know best. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So, may you know the presence of Christ with you in your home or in your work through the technology that you're using. May you feel that Christ is there. May you know his breath bringing you new life and restoration. 